In our previous video, we told you that the universe did not exist forever, and it was born approximately 13.8 billion years ago. But how do we know how old it is? After all, we were not there at the beginning of everything, and we also haven't been around for long enough to observe live its evolution. Let us do some detective work here and see what clues we have about the age of the universe. The keyword is cosmochronology. That is to say, we want to measure the age of things in the universe and set some constraints on its age. First step, always question the neighbors. Hi, ho neighborino. What is the oldest object in the solar system? Radioactive isotopes are a reliable method to measure the age of solid materials because they decay over time with a very specific decay rate. In this way, rock samples from the Moon and some meteorites have been dated to be about 4.5 billion years old. Second step, let's question the Milky Way. What are the oldest objects in our galaxy? White dwarfs are stars that don't burn hydrogen or other elements anymore, but instead they cool down very slowly over time. Their luminosity decreases with time, and we can use it to estimate their age. In our galaxy, white dwarfs reach ages between 9 and 10 billion years. But let's have a broader look. Do other galaxies have anything to say about the age of the universe? In this case, globular clusters are our best bet. They are roughly spherical lumps of stars of similar age, since those stars are thought to have formed all at the same time. One of the most precise measurements of the age of a globular cluster using beryllium abundances gives us an age of 13.4 billion years. Therefore, the universe must be at least 13.4 billion years old. So what of the remaining 400 million years? To answer this question, we need to resort to cosmology. The first thing we should ask ourselves is what do we mean when we say that the universe has a certain age? We know that our universe is expanding, which means that the distance between pairs of points is increasing in time. This allows us to define a moment in the past where all the distances between the points were zero. Therefore, we can use this moment to start a stopwatch and measure how much time it takes to arrive to the current state of the universe. To make an analogy, imagine that you are in the Lisbon train station and you are observing a train coming from Porto. Assuming that the train had approximately the same speed during the trip, the time that it takes to go from Porto to Lisbon is just the ratio of the distance traveled and its speed. This example can be translated to cosmology by the means of the Hubble law that tells us that the speed at which two points move far away from each other is proportional to their distance, and the factor that relates these two quantities is called Hubble rate. If the value of the Hubble rate was not changing during the time, then the age of the universe will just be the inverse of this number. This, of course, is just an approximation. As in the example of the train, it is not enough to know the speed at a certain moment, but we will need to know how fast it was going in different segments of its trip. Our current standard cosmological model allows us to determine the evolution of the Hubble rate knowing just few cosmological parameters that quantify the matter and energy content of the universe, thus reaching the number of 13.8 billion years. I know that at the end of all of this explanation you might be wondering, why didn't you tell us the current value of the Hubble rate? Well, at the moment different methods of measuring this quantity are giving different results. This difference does not affect our estimate on the age of the universe, but it has been the cause of debates between cosmologists, giving rise to what many people call the crisis in cosmology. But this is a topic for a future video. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. And don't forget, you ask, send your answers.